Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is John Leland, and I am a digital marketing strategist, and I am so glad that you are here. Uh, this is a special edition of the Video Mojo web show. Uh, it is called the Web Show Web Show, but the Video Mojo in particular is a playful exploration of the bleeding edge of a more vibrant video and social media presence. So that's what we're doing kind of week after week. This is the 40th episode, I'm kind of proud to say, and it's the ninth episode in this new streaming web show format. Uh, so let's get into it. This is the Web Show Web Show. I'm going to go behind the scenes of what uh, we've developed really over the last number of months as a whole hybrid format that combines live streaming, social media video, and a podcast. So it's really kind of involved. Um, those of you that are regular viewers of Video Mojo know that it's a four part harmony or a four part meal, four course meal. Uh, and today I'm just going to do a brief tee it up about the adventure that a web show is. And then uh, I have a special presentation for you. It's not a collaborative conversation. I'm flying solo today, but I have a slide deck and I want to, I'm really going to give you a broad overview, kind of the 30,000 foot view of what a web show is and all the pieces that are going in to produce this series. Uh, and then I really want to have your questions and comments. We've got the YouTube comments and the Facebook Live comments available. I can bring them right on the screen as I do every episode. Um, so please, I look forward to your questions. Uh, and unlike normal, uh, the luscious links are going to be throughout. I'm going to talk about all the software and hardware and ingredients of what we're using. So uh, luscious links will not be a separate episode. So I call this, uh, I call Video Mojo a playful exploration, not just for the fun of it, but because as I talked about last week with Jay Akunzo, being an explorer is actually uh, a form of content marketing. The traditional thing that people hear all the time is I want to be a thought leader. I want to be an expert. I want to share my expertise. And actually, I am doing that. But it's really more than that because I'm experimenting and I'm playing and I'm exploring this whole new media. And that's how the whole web show concept, let alone the web show itself, came to be. It was an exploration and I'll, I'll explain that history. But I really want to invite everybody to experiment and play. Um, that's how web shows happen. That I think makes it more engaging. You can bring everybody along with you. Uh, on your adventure, communicating what you want to communicate about using the tools and techniques that you want to use to tell hopefully a more meaningful and more valuable story that makes a difference. We're not looking for more content for the sake of content. We're looking for valuable, meaningful, uh, you know, content that helps connect people and build community and make the world a better place. So this is my presentation that I want to talk through about uh, the, you know, the web show, web show. I think that web shows are the best way to create a vibrant video and social media presence. And, uh, you know, I've been a big proponent. And if you've watched anything that I've done, you know that I believe in the power of video. Um, and this is in some ways like video on steroids because we multipurpose what we do live and there's kind of no limit to the power of that. And then we also make it available in multiple formats. So what do I mean by a web show and what are the particulars of that? So a web show is your own weekly branded live streaming event. It's a YouTube video series. It's a podcast. And it's a content marketing and social media creation machine. There are just so many ways to repurpose the content. So I want to walk you through that in a little more detail. But let me tell you first kind of like how did we get there. Um, so how we got there was we started out, I started Video Mojo in, <clears throat> excuse me, in August of uh, last year. So going on almost a year and a half ago. And um, through that, I pioneered what I think is a pretty original distribution system where I was doing video blog posts, stripping out the audio and turned that into a short form podcast. 
So podcasting became part of it. Then when the pandemic broke out, uh, I did a series of live, I produced a series of live events on Zoom for the Soul of Money Institute um, with Lynn Twist and Sarah Vetter. And they were huge community involvement um, uh, events. And I really learned a lot about the value of creating live events and being able to engage with people live, having live Q&A and that kind of thing. And then um, with the interest in live streaming, I found a whole new way to do the live that is much more TV-like than Zoom. Uh, and I'm going to explain about that software and what the tools and techniques are. So that really kind of married my passion for meaningful content uh, with high value, uh, you know, content. So um, that's how we got here. And let's walk through again what that is. What do I mean by a web show? So web shows are, like I said, live streaming events. So we've got a multi-camera switching um, and the ability to do audience participation. Like I said before, I want your questions and we put them right on the screen out of YouTube and Facebook comments. Then we take that and we edit it, we polish it. Like, for example, my mistakes I've been making um, <laughs> with pushing the wrong button uh, actually can edit those out. If they're technical issues, tighten up the beginning so we don't have such a big pre-roll. And we publish that as a web series on YouTube, on Instagram TV, on Facebook, on our Facebook page. Uh, we refer to it through the YouTube link on, on LinkedIn. I'm waiting for LinkedIn to give me access to LinkedIn Live, plug, plug. But so the web series, the video series, once we have the edited program, goes out and gets a wider distribution by itself. Um, then we strip the audio out, and this entire program becomes a podcast so that people can listen on the podcatcher app of their choice. And then this content creation machine, kind of, I made up the term, but, you know, one of the things that I'm looking at doing in the next month or two is pulling out more segments. We've, we've come up with a title. We actually haven't done them. They're called Video Mojo Minis. And I'm going to pull out highlights of a conversation or even in some cases, multiple conversations. I'll put in a small plug for one of the past episodes or a few of the past episodes. I talked a lot about storytelling. Um, and I had Michael Cass on about storytelling. I had David Drake. I had Andrea Lee. I had Julia McNeil and others um, really exploring the depth of authenticity and storytelling. So I may take clips out of one or more of those and make little video mojo minis. Uh, we also pull quotes out of the video mojo episodes and publish those as quote graphics on social media. So I think you get the idea is that once you do programs like this, you have the opportunity to really kind of move through that content and repurpose it and, you know, continue to expand your voice. So what does it take to produce a show like this? One of the things that I want to say kind of more than anything is it's a team effort. Uh, I have uh, my technical and co-director, co a uh, longtime friend, Vince Casalena, in the background, we go over my setup. We go over the rundown of the programs and get the, the scene sequence. Um, I, I have my social media team at, at uh, Com Bridges. Uh, and, you know, anyway, I, I won't get into all the names. But the, the software that I'm using that I keep bringing up this slide, I decided not to do a full demo today. If people really want a demo, there definitely are good demos of Ecamm Live out there. It's a Mac-only program, but I've really found it, um, I'm, and I've found it really useful that it's easy to use. It seems to have all the features I want. Just in the last couple of weeks, they've added an interview feature, which enables me to bring on one, two, three. I've been doing a a client web show uh, for a wonderful nonprofit called the Cancer Story Project. And just this week, we had three people on myself as moderator, uh, Dr. Ricky Polykov as my co host, and then a guest. And we, you know, I can move it back and forth from a solo shot to a two shot to a three shot as if I'm directing live television, something you couldn't do in Zoom. Um, it does lower thirds, it can bring in the music. Um, that's Ecamm Live is also how I'm bringing in the chat from YouTube and Facebook. So it really has been a gift. And there is something called OBS Studio if you're on a PC. But I'm, I am a Mac fanboy and um, Apple fanboy. And I, I really enjoy the Mac-like friendliness of Ecamm Live. 
Um, occasionally, we've hit a few technical glitches, but they keep revving it. They're clearly working on it actively, and, and I'm, I'm really comfortable with it. Um, re, Restream.io is a multicaster, so we go out of Ecamm Live into Restream, and then Restream sends it out uh, so that it can be simultaneously on both my personal profile, my Facebook page, and uh, our YouTube channel. So that's kind of how it gets out there. Anchor.fm is another luscious link for you. That's how the podcast is distributed. It's a free online app that hooks into iTunes and Spotify and all the major podcatchers. So we publish the audio as a um, podcast through Anchor.fm. Uh, internally, we use Monday.com as a project management tool. I'm a fan of ConvertKit, and of course, email marketing is probably the most important way to get the word out and promote your webcast or your web show. Um, and Sendle, Sendable is our platform for doing the multimedia uh, publishing, posting. That Those last three are kind of part of what we do as a company at ComBridges. The hardware that I'm using uh, is a new iMac. You definitely need to have a good, powerful Mac uh, to do Ecamm Live and stream. Uh, I, you know, One of the things that's happened for me in the process of doing that is I'm not talking to you on my webcam. I'm talking to you on my DSLR. Uh, I, I had a Canon uh, Rebel 7i, uh, and so that's something that uh, I really have brought into... Um, into use to, in order to do a better quality web show. And I think that's a good way to go. Uh, Ecamm Live is another, um, you know, got involved in connecting the DSLR to the iMac. Um, there is a Canon utility, but I actually have found Ecamm Live to be the um, easier way to go. And it really does give me a clean connection. I just needed a USB interface in order to do that. Uh, I've been pushing the wrong buttons on uh, something called an Elgato Stream Deck, which enables me to change scenes and also to switch slides in uh, Apple Keynote, which I'm using for the presentation. Uh, I had uh, this uh, Rode shotgun mic, uh, and I use Apple AirPods to monitor in order to minimize the echo. It's good to have an earpiece as opposed to having the speaker. There is a echo reduction uh or echo cancellation feature in Ecamm Live, but we want to do everything to kind of minimize those problems. And then there, I have a couple lights, including this Elgato Key Light Air, which is kind of fun. It, it hooks in through Wi-Fi to my Mac, and then uh, that enables me to, um, I actually can change the color of it a little bit and I give it a dimmer so I can control the, the quality of it. So that's, that's what we got going on. It's, it's actually a fair amount. So what does it take to develop a show like this? And I, I want to really kind of talk about that seriously because it's not a whimsical thing, even though I really recommend experimenting and getting yourself out there. Um, so the first thing is being willing to experiment. Uh, the second thing is getting clear about who it is you want to talk to and what it is you want to say. So having that, you know, beginning with the end in mind, goal setting mindset, I think is, is important because otherwise, you know, you can kind of flail all over the place. I've got a long passion, um, you know, long-term passion that's been going on literally for decades of loving the bleeding edge of all the new technology that helps people communicate better. And I want to help people to make a difference and do communications that matter. Uh, we evolved this program format, like I said, we now have a pretty consistent four-part format. Uh, initially, it wasn't like that. They were little three, four-minute videos that I just did as video blog posts. But as we moved into web show, um, I wanted it to be consistent, and I, and I wanted it to have these program elements so it really is a show. Um, then don't neglect or don't underrate the amount of work that goes into planning each episode. Um, you know, Vince and I generally walk through the programs in advance, and um, obviously there's guest booking, and I like to get out in front in terms of doing the emails and the social media promotion. Obviously, the team appreciates it that if I can look two, three weeks ahead, and we know kind of who's coming down the line, and we did that for a while, and 
as I'm going to say later, I'm going to take a break. And then there's whatever graphics and other presentation materials you want to do. But it, it, it's a team. It is a show. It's not really something that I would recommend for most or hardly any solopreneurs. Uh, but I think that brands, companies that really want to make a difference in the marketplace, uh, I recommend last week's episode with Jay Okunzo because we talked about the power of web shows and the kind of difference that they can make. So I didn't, I didn't do a demo, but I did want to um, offer you this, at least the slide of the Ecamm interface so that you can see what it looks like. Um, and this is just off of their website. The, the little window with the red and green kind of middle on the right side is uh, the interview uh, module. And you can see that they've got the two uh, subjects side by side. And each one of those little windows are elements of the program that are pretty easy to access. Uh, and up top in the uh, middle right is where the comments are coming in. So I have a window with the comments and uh, I'm going to turn my attention to the uh, comments and see what kind of questions we have. And don't forget that uh, you can do that yourself. So YouTube comments, Facebook comments, I really want your questions. And I see that there are a few things happening. Uh, and I'll kind of walk down. Uh, Sean, former guest, the show looks amazing, so professional and well done. That's not a question, but it's a really appreciated, nice comment. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Vince has a question. Vince is asking, can we restream to Zoom? Uh, you know, it's a really interesting feature that, uh, that they have. Um, so restream, no. Um, what there is is this virtual camera feature uh, in Ecamm Live that enables me to um, basically take anything that I'm outputting out of Ecamm Live, so the show that you're seeing, shows up as a camera option inside Zoom. So I can feed the graphics out of Ecamm Live. I can feed the camera with the uh, adjustments. So there, that's another thing I didn't mention earlier. Uh, Ecamm Live lets me kind of, in a professional video way, paint the picture, change the color, improve the contrast, that kind of stuff. Um, and that output shows up as a um, Zoom camera. So I can take the output of Ecamm Live, but restreaming and going to Facebook Live, I mean, I guess, you know, there is a feature in Zoom to go to Facebook Live or to go to Zoom. Um, so indirectly, yes, but the restreaming capability and particularly the feedback of the comments that come through restream is really a different kind of functionality and I think more appropriate for a web show. So keep the questions and comments coming, please. So uh, Vince is asking also, how much time do I spend on each show? That's a good question, Vince. Uh, I have to think about that a little bit. You know, I, I guess I am, you could call it a blessing or you could call it a curse that uh, I feel like I have a lot to say and I do love exploring this frontier. Um, so, you know, part of it is thinking about it and outlining it. Um, you know, I would say I probably spend four hours a week, total guess. Um, you know, part of it normally, unlike these, this special edition, is that I'm bringing in people whose perspective I value and having a collaborative conversation and sharing their expertise. And that doesn't take much time other than kind of thinking about the questions that we want to cover. Um, but, you know, I would say not counting the learning curve and the startup, but I, I probably spend four hours a week on the show itself. So other comments and questions, or we will make this one a quickie. Uh, anyway, I, it's, it's something for me to think about. I'll keep my eye out. Excuse me. Sean Shepard. Okay. I'll keep my eye out right now. Sean Shepard is asking, see, notice how I can move these around. I can resize them. Uh, so he's asking if, a, if the guest does not have a great setup, lighting camera setter, is there something you can do on your end to give it a more professional look? No. <laughs> in fact, Vince and I are working on, um, in particular for the Cancer Story Project uh, web show, uh, a cheat sheet, if you will, to help them better prepare. 
Um, one of the things, like I talked about using a microphone and separate monitoring, so you have really good audio, or you can just use AirPods or even, you know, people do it all the time to use your, um, like your phone's earbuds, even if they're wired. That gives you a microphone and the ability to monitor without having the feedback. Um, but having a good camera, having good lighting uh, is something that we all need to work on. So we're going to support people with that. Um, but it was clearly a contrast. For example, last week when I had Jay Akunzo, he's more of a podcaster, but he had a nice professional microphone up close and he was using uh, audio uh, earbuds to monitor and the sound was good, his lighting was good. And so that's something I think if you want to be a webcaster, if you want to do video on a regular basis, that the guests need to put in some time and energy and we will support them. For example, on, on the Cancer Story Project web show, um, they're not necessarily media people. So uh, we're supporting them to get better at it. And it's something that if you want to make a commitment to do this kind of video, you want to have some lights. You want to have as good camera as you can, have as good mic as you can. Uh, Terry, how you doing? I'm just going to bring your comment on here without even reading it. Is, there, is this something that your company consults with clients? Like, since I'm just starting to launch my skin massage techniques online, would this be too technical a process? So great question, Terry. Thank you. And good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Yes, we consult with clients. Um, more often, we do it as a, a service, uh, but it's, it is a technical issue, just like I was just talking about in answer to Sean's question. It takes uh, a time and energy to set up the camera, set up the microphone, and then there's a whole other area of your presentation skills, um, and that's a separate coaching area. Um, for example, uh, I've brought in Julia McNeil, who was a guest on this show, as a consultant to the Cancer Story Project, and um, she's helping to ha make those presentations better. So it's a, I would say it's a commitment. Um, you understand commitment, I know well, because I know you, Terry, and it's a learning. You know, I've, for me, I like was attracted to it kind of like a moth to a flame. I wanted to learn this software. Uh, I wanted to be able to do this. And then I was really blessed that a client came along that wanted us to produce a web show for them. So I think that kind of like you wouldn't step on the up on the first tee of a golf course without practicing. You wouldn't try and play the piano without practicing and learning. This is a skill and, a, and an area of expertise that you don't have to learn to produce the whole thing, but doing online video clearly is an area of skill development, both from the point of view of communicating with an audience through a piece of glass like I'm looking through in the camera, um, as well as what goes into formatting your story, how do you share about your skincare products in a way that really engages people and they get why you're doing it. I know you well enough that you believe in your products and you really want to share that enthusiasm. So those are, it's, it's a learning and a practice uh, I talked about that actually in some of my early blog posts, to think about it like a practice. Think about it as something that you want to learn, and I'm happy to support you however we can support you, but uh, I, th I hope that answers your question. Uh, Samantha Coleman, in your opinion, what piece of equipment would be best to invest in first? Well, you know, as I also said in one of my earlier video blog posts, the camera that most of us have in our pocket is a remarkable camera. Um, so I think that having a good microphone and shooting with your iPhone or other, uh, you know, high quality smartphone uh, can get you started with doing online video. I don't know if there's any particular piece in terms of uh, getting involved in web shows. Uh, I think that learning the software and getting involved with something like Ecamm Live is important, but it's really a system and uh, I don't have a quick answer to that because I think it's really looking at what's the weakest link in your arsenal. How do you put together a package so it can look good and feel good? Um, <laughs> Vince wants to see more features in, 
<laughs> I'm getting some funny questions from Vince. Uh, so I, I'm going to go with this one. How much experience do you have as a host? This is such a loaded question for Vince to be asking. <laughs> so Vince, because Vin, the reason is that Vince and I go back 40 something years and uh, actually co-produced a TV show in San Francisco that I hosted. Uh, I'm the artist formerly known as Dancing Bear. And so um, I have been doing, you know, that's one of the things that really helped me move into this quickly and perhaps also fueled that attraction that I had or have for learning how to do this. Um, because I go, you know, even before I met Vince, I was doing radio shows when I was in college. So I have experience as a host and I kind of amaze myself actually that I can just sort of sit here and do this and blah, 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 and talk about what's going on. So uh, anyway, uh, that is a gift that I've had in terms of my life experience that I benefit from. And one of the things, frankly, that's also been really interesting about the evolution of the Cancer Story Project web show, which is called Cancer Talks, um, is that I've, you know, even though I'm not a cancer expert, I'm enough of the core team at the Cancer Story Project that I'm hosting that web show. So we're producing it. I'm hosting it. Like I said, I brought in Dr. Uh, Ricky Polykov as my co-host because she is a doctor and she can provide uh, a whole other level of expertise, particularly around integrative medicine. So um, anyway, thanks for that question, Vince. <laughs> Where do we go from here? He he also asked, would I show more features of Ecamm Live? But um, it's hard to show the screen of what I'm doing. I was thinking about setting up my iPhone, and there is a way to wirelessly have my iPhone um, be a camera source inside Ecamm Live, and then I could turn around and point at the screen, but that didn't happen. I didn't quite have time for that. So um, I think I covered them. Any more questions or comments? Or we generally run about a half hour and we're coming up on that time. So this felt good. Thank you everybody for who is here and for your questions and comments. Uh, like I said, the Luscious links, we'll put links to all those uh, hardware and software products that I mentioned uh, in the show notes, in the description on Facebook, YouTube, what have you. Um, the the Ecamm Live, I think, is an affiliate link. The ConvertKit is an affiliate link and everything else is just stuff I use. But, um, you know, I'm not recommending any of it because of the affiliate revenue, which isn't much anyway. It's, it's just uh, trying to give you the best stuff. And if that's a tip that we can get in terms of a little affiliate revenue, that's awesome. Oh, more things coming in. Thank you much, Terry says. Nice to see you in action. Uh, and can I, Vince is asking, can I explain what your backup staff does on this show? <laughs> Vince is the backup staff. There's also um, Samantha and Rachel who are um, social media uh, managers and graphics producers. Peter Klein is a project manager. I have a bookkeeper and that's, that's the backup staff. Uh, and I think we're going to move on. So my upcoming shows... <laughs> <laughs> no upcoming shows. I'm going to take a two-week break uh, for Thanksgiving and figure out what's next in December. So have a great holiday and a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, and uh, as usual, uh, if you want more links or if you want to follow or subscribe, uh, if you want to get the email blasts, uh, this link page at play.combridges.com slash links is uh, the place to go. We've got it all wired up there for you, whatever it is you want, including the free webinar Beyond the Hype uh, is linked there and our YouTube channel and our social media and our email newsletter and the blog, which has all the past episodes. And I have really been pleased and proud of the quality of content in the past episodes. So I invite you to explore them at combridges.com slash blog. And as always, I just have to thank you. It's like, I'm here because of you. I'm here because the web show uh, develops a relationship and makes a connection. And so uh, that is something that I'm really, really grateful for. So thank you very, very much for your time and attention. Have a great holiday, and we'll see you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.